Now we look into what to test. So far, what we have done is that we have designed uh, the tests. So we have designed test inputs and we have designed test cases where each test exercises one or more of the test conditions and we have also documented the expected results. We have also uh, implemented some of the test cases uh, to the table that we saw previously and also the, the expected results. So we have been executing the steps of designing the tests and building the tests. However, now we will move backwards. So before designing the tests and implementing the test, one should determine what to test. And this is actually one of the trickiest parts. So designing and building the tests can be quite straightforward, although laborious, uh, after you know what to test. Uh, but figuring out what to test probably requires more, uh, more thinking and, and more knowledge of the application and, and the domain. So we need to list the conditions, or some would call these actually test variables, that we would like to test. We need to understand that there might be many conditions and many variables for each system function or each system quality attribute we need to test. And we should also prioritize these test conditions or test variables. Now, how do we find these test conditions or test variables? If we look back on what we have done so far, we have basically uh, tested the calendar's uh, date field and we have used domain knowledge to design those test cases. However, uh, to find more sources for testing, one should consider looking at requirements documents uh, of the calendar application, uh, specifications like user manual in this case would be excellent source, and also looking at the past defect data on what has failed in the past. Now, all this information, for example, previous failures, can inform us of the test cases. So if there is a defect that keeps reappearing or that is particularly serious, then test cases designed based on certain defects uh, can be a good approach as well. Also, the requirements document can give information on the priorities of, of different requirements. So how important they are to the user. Uh, from specifications, you can also see uh, how the different uh, uh, features of the product are used. Uh, what is missing from this list that comes from the Bernstein's book is, is telemetry or information on how the features are used, how much of particular features is used and in what way is it used. If you collect the sort of usage data from the actual field, then this can also inform your testing. So here is a sum list on ideas on what needs to be tested. So explicit input and output variables that are visible in the, in the external interfaces, in the graphical user interfaces of the system. Uh, internal states of the system. Uh, environmental conditions that, that might result in, in different behavior. Uh, Preconditions and, and so on. But, but really, this list should come from, from the knowledge sources. Now we look into the calendar application again with respect to the question on what to test. So what has happened so far is that we have tested the, the calendar entry time elements day, month and year. Uh, other entry time elements that probably should be tested are the minutes. We should also test daylight savings, we should also test time zones, we should also test full day events, multi day events, and so on. We should also test other calendar entry entry fields, like the title of the calendar entry, uh, the contents of the calendar entry, uh, location, uh, links, and also the plugin features. Uh, to different systems, for example, in Outlook, you can uh, 
have a plugin for, for Zoom meetings. Also, the data in the calendar is likely going to affect how the, how the events look. So, can we have overlapping events? Uh, will the calendar inform us if there are conflicts and we try to schedule two events on top of each other? And this is just a partial list on, on what to test in the calendar application. But you get the idea on that there is much more uh, that is ongoing in the, in the what to test department. That it is really, really complicated and requires a lot of knowledge and information on, from different sources. So far, we have only talked about the calendar application. And the reason is that we are all sort of experts on the calendar application. We have some domain knowledge. I cannot claim that we would be the top expert, but we have some idea on how the calendar application um, should be working. But if we move from the calendar application to some other domain where we have uh, less domain knowledge, we, we might be totally lost in where we, how we design our test cases. For example, um, I have no information on how air traffic system controls work. I have no information on, on ship design, building management, banks. Uh, I have some information on, on cars, of course, by driving a car, but not really the internals of the car. Uh, I have some information on using a dishwasher. I have some information on using on mobile phones. But I cannot claim that I would be like a top expert in any of these areas. And this is... If, if you go to work in a company that does software for air traffic control and you come with, uh, with a computer or software engineering or computer science degree or information processing science degree, then you have to spend a lot of time in acqui acquiring this domain knowledge uh, for testing. But not only for testing, also for, for software development and architecture as well. Coming up with important and, and good testing uh, it's really relying on, on the domain knowledge of the, of the area. So, in addition to, let's say, computer science, software engineering knowledge, you also have to be a domain expert in understanding what to test on a particular application.